Ibrahim. So today we are going to talk about the inverted delay. So um, delay, there are many definitions for the delay, and it can be described into two types. One is the propagation delay, and one is the rise and fall time. So the rise and fall time describes a signal. So in the input signal, there is also the rise time, which is the time to go from uh, 0 to 1, and more specifically from uh, 0 0.2 volts to 0 0.8. So the time taken for the voltage uh, to reach up from 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 is the rise time. So it is uh, present both in the in V in and also in V out. So here, uh, because this is an inverter, right, and the output is the inverse of the input, so the rise time comes at the end. So here the rise time is the time to taken from to go from 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 and conversely the fault time is the time for the signal to go from 0 0.8 to 0 0.2 it is present both in the input and the output and a more important uh, characteristic uh, is the propagation delay so the propagation delay, there is the rising propagation delay and the falling propagation delay. The propagation delay are counted from the middle of the signal which is at 0 0.5. So the rising propagation delay is from uh, the falling edge uh, when it is 0 0.5 at the input to the rising edge at the output. So this time is known as the rising propagation delay. So the rising refers to the output. The output is rising. The falling uh, propagation delay, you look at the output. The output is falling down. So here, you can measure from the 0 0.5 at the input signal to the 0 0.5 at the output signal. And the difference in time is known as the falling propagational delay. So let's say this one is 3 seconds and this one 2 seconds. So the average propagational delay is just the average between the two. So 3 plus 2 divided by 2, which is 2.5 seconds. Okay. So uh, the delay estimation. So this um step response the step response here for an inverter it's actually like a step right but in this is the ideal but in the actual fact it looks like a curve like this and this is uh, also like the first order RC response so the RC response is when you have a signal when it's connected to R and a C an input signal is connected to R and C because the presence of the capacitor the output will be will look like a, a curve signal so what we can say is that we are using this model this RC model this RC model to describe the behavior of a inverter. Okay, so let's see how we are going to do it. So uh, RC delay, there is another name for it, and it is called it's called as the Elmo delay. The Elmo delay means that the transistors can be represented into resistors and capacitor. We have seen how the drain source of the transistor can be represented as a, a resistor and we have seen that actually in the layout of the transistor we can actually uh, see that there are the presence of capacitors so this is the layout of the 
transistor you can see that between the gate and the, the drain and between the gate and the bulk there is actually a capacitor so actually we can represent this transistor into both R and C so when you have multiple um, transistors connected together they form an RC ladder so uh, the propagational delay when you have a bunch of transistors can be summed together according to this formula and this is the summation of the nodes um, the transistors and they can be expanded uh, like this so the first node is R1 times C1 and at the second node is R1 plus R2 R1 plus R2 uh, multiplied by C2 and then so forth R1 uh, if it's N is R1 plus R2 plus until Rn multiplied by Cn so this is the Elmo delay so uh, we have done this before we have we have managed to transform a transistor into a resistor and this is done by using the equation V equals to I R and R is actually V over I and what is the voltage in question is the voltage across the drain and the source and the current is also the current across the drain and the source so um, this is a approximation model it is not uh, very very accurate but it is a good assumption to predict what is the RC delay okay so for more accurate uh, calculations we can use the simulator and we have the spice you have the micro wind you have the mental graphics and all the other tools to do accurate predictions okay so as a ballpark for as a VLSI designer you can have rough calculations in your head to estimate the resistance and capacitance so as you know the capacitance is related to the layout so the capacitance can be uh, approximated in terms of the width and length so if you have a gate here and this is L and this is W right the capacitance can be described in terms of the uh, gate width so a transistor that has wider value uh, wider or larger transistor will have larger capacitance okay so let's see here so this is w1 and w2 and this is l so if w2 is bigger than w1 so the capacitance in the second transistor will be bigger than the capacitance in the first transistor so you can approximate so let's say the capacitance so let's say this is 3 micron and this is 2 micron so the capacitance per uh, micrometer is 2 femtofarads so if it's 3 micrometer it will this capacitance over here will be 6 femtofarad and here is 2 times 2 so it's 4 femtofarad okay resistance is is different the current will flow in the transistor so if this is the transistor and the current will flow from the drain to the source okay right so if um, the electron is traveling in this way so a wider channel it will have a larger current if w is high then the current is high so we see here that for the length it is different uh, if the length is larger the resistance is larger and the current is lower so uh, resistance is noted as 6 kilo ohm here times micron 
so if you have a longer resistance if you have a longer length you will have a larger resistance so here if your length is 2 micron then your total resistance is 12 kilo ohm okay